today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. I believe another fullness of time is upon us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Another fullness of time. We're in it right now, praise God. I'm not talking about, you know, the appearing of Jesus. That's coming. But before it comes, God is accelerating things. Things are going to come to pass in your life more rapidly than they ever have before. Divine acceleration is the supernatural ability of God to bring His plans, His purposes, and His will to pass in a much faster rate than humanly possible. I like that. Let me read it again. Divine acceleration is the supernatural ability of God to bring His plans, His purposes, and His will to pass at a much faster rate than is humanly possible. Now, when God says in His Word that certain things will come to pass at a certain time, who can stop that? Who's able to stop that? For instance, let's go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Look at verse 4. When the fullness of time was come, fullness of time. Let me read some other translations. When the proper time had fully come, that's the Amplified. The message translation says, when the time arrived that was set by God. The Passion translation says, when the time of fulfillment had come. The New Living translation says, when the right time came. And another translation says, when the time came for completion. Now, if you keep reading this, you know that it's talking about God sending his son to redeem mankind. Amen. To fulfill the mission and the assignment that was on Jesus. So when the fullness of time was come, no government, yeah. come on. That's right. Yeah. no religion, <laughs> no devil could stop it from coming to pass. Can you say amen to that? Jesus came with an assignment to destroy the works of the devil, to redeem us, hallelujah, to make us righteous, having right standing with God, to cause us to be blessed and highly favored. And when the time was right and he came and he fulfilled his assignment, Satan had to stand by and watch it happen and couldn't do a thing about it. Well, I believe another fullness of time is upon us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Another fullness of time. We're in it right now, praise God. I'm not talking about, you know, the appearing of Jesus. That's coming. But before it comes, God is accelerating things. Things are going to come to pass in your life more rapidly than they ever have before. Lift your hands and say, I receive that, praise God. Hallelujah, I receive that. Amen. Go with me to the book of Amos. And once again, this doesn't mean that we no longer have to use our faith. What it does mean is it's not going to take as long for things to come to pass that you've been believing for Hallelujah. to come to pass as it has in the past. Amen. You know, there, there are some things that I'm enjoying today that I stood for 20 years for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 20 years. Yes, sir. But they came to pass. Yep. Now, once, once they came to pass, I, I, I didn't remember how long it took. Right. I was too excited praising God that it happened. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 20 years. I, I, I've heard prophetic words come forth with people saying, and, I, and people that I have confidence in their ability to hear the voice of God, that uh, what took 20 years will take only months now. Yes. 
what took months will take only hours now. God's accelerating things. There's a lot of people in here experiencing it. Now, listen to this. Amos chapter 9 and verse 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet olive and so forth. But notice he's talking about acceleration, divine acceleration. Now the message translation reads this way. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. Things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up with it all. Everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look, blessings. Hallelujah. Come on, folks, that is shouting ground right there. Everything is going to happen so fast, you won't be able to keep up with it all. And everywhere you look, blessings, 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 blessings. Hallelujah. Say, I receive that right now. Amen. The NIV translation says, the time is come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow together or grow faster than we can harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That proves to us that God is capable of accelerating things. He can slow things down. He can speed things up. Remember what he told Joshua? Tell the sun and the moon to stand still until we win this battle. And he commanded the sun and the moon to stand still and they obeyed. You don't think God can speed things up? Amen. Amen. Well, go with me to John chapter two. John chapter two. You're all familiar with this. Oh, I'm glad I live in a time such as this. Now you're all familiar with this story. But let's begin reading in verse one. And the third day, there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, they have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do? Or what is that to do with me? My hour is not yet come. Notice his mother is responsible for speeding up the time. He said, my hour has not come. But when mama talks, thou shalt obey. Okay. His mother saith unto his servants. It almost appears that she didn't pay any attention to him. (laughs) She said unto his servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firklings apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pot and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called to the bridegroom and saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth the good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse or drunk that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus. Say that with me. This beginning of Jesus, I'm sorry. This beginning of miracles did Jesus. Say one more time. This beginning of miracles did Jesus. Would you agree with me that Jesus 
started his earthly ministry with a miracle of divine acceleration? That's how he started his ministry, with a miracle of divine acceleration. Now, let me, let me read some things that I wrote down. I'm not a wine specialist. I've never drank wine, but I asked some people who know something about it, and they tell me this. Making wine is a long, slow process. It can take up to three years to get from the initial planting to the first harvest, and then it might be another two years or more after that. Some authorities even say that it can take up to eight years. So we can see by this story that the very first miracle of Jesus involved divine acceleration. C.S. Lewis said in his book, Miracles, regarding this story, Jesus caused a short circuiting of natural process. Hallelujah. A short circuiting of natural process. And let's remember, this was the beginning of miracles. Now, I think it's also interesting that when they filled all six water pots with water, which held, they say, from 20 to 30 gallons apiece, and they were filled to the brim. Once it was turned into wine, it was much more wine than a wedding party could possibly consume. It was between 120 and 180 gallons. So not only did Jesus begin his ministry with a miracle of divine acceleration, but he also set out to prove he's the God of more than enough. Give the Lord a good shout, praise God. Amen. Divine acceleration, and he's the God of more than enough. All right, now we're getting into the good part. That's my introduction, I'm ready to preach. No, it, it won't take very long. But I don't wanna miss any of this, so I'm just gonna read my notes, that's all right. All right. Now, God is a God of patterns. God is a God of patterns. Years ago, we had a, a Bible school here in Fort Worth, and one of our speakers every year was a man by the name of Dick Rubin. Dick was instrumental in bringing about that great move of God that happened down in uh, Florida many years ago. He, he, he set the stage for it. That great, what was it, Brownwood or Brownville? Yeah, and he set the stage for it. And his theme was this, when the pattern's right, the glory falls. When the pattern is right, the glory falls. And he taught that every year in our school and it became, uh, he, he became one of our students' favorite teachers because it was so powerful. So once again, listen to this. God is a God of patterns to show you what I'm talking about. Hebrews 9, 11 says, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come. Many features of the Old Testament system were put in place by God to show what would eventually become a reality through the work of Jesus Christ as our greater high priest. Various details of the Jewish tabernacle served as a shadow of good things that God would eventually confer upon New Testament believers. Hebrews 10, one says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come. The message translation says, the old plan was only a hint of the good things in the new plan. Now the word shadow means an indication that something was present representing something that was to come, an imperfect representation, a pattern. The principle is God forms a purpose and then he reveals a pattern. A pattern is defined as a form or a model proposed for being an example. Hebrews chapter nine, verse 11 through 14, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. The blood of goats and calves 
under the old covenant served as a pattern. Galatians chapter four says, once again, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son to redeem. And how did he redeem us? Following the pattern, shedding blood. Are you with me? He followed the pattern, shedding blood. Now let's look at something very interesting regarding the ministry of Jesus. Once again, he says that this was the beginning of miracles in John chapter two with him uh, uh, causing divine acceleration and proving to them that he was the God of more than enough. But then you move on into the book of Acts and not only do we see divine acceleration, but in the early church, we see unstoppable momentum. Hallelujah. Unstoppable momentum. Amen. And momentum is defined as movement with impelling force. Acts chapter two, verse 41. At the birth of the church, the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, 41, and the same day were added to them about 3,000 souls. They got filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, and now 3,000 people come to Christ. That's unstoppable momentum. But then short time later, Acts chapter four, verse four, many of them which heard the word believed and the number of them were about 5,000. Notice what's happening. Notice what's happening in the birth of the church. Unstoppable momentum. That's what God intended and that's what he desires for the church to experience today. Divine acceleration and unstoppable momentum, praise God. Now, the only thing that stopped that momentum was they got religious. They got religious. And religion has a way of stopping a move of God. But God's not done yet. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, the best is yet to come. Amen. So my point is this. I, I want to throw out something for your consideration. If you don't believe it, fine. Just for your consideration. I wrote in my notes. If Jesus began his ministry with a miracle of divine acceleration, could it be that God is going to close out this church age with the miracle of divine acceleration? Would you agree with that? Folks, we are in a time of divine acceleration. God is speeding up things. Now, you know what that says to me? Amos chapter nine was once again. the seed planted and the harvest coming up almost before you can get the seed in the ground. I've had that happen several times. If you, you, you too, Jesse, we've talked about it. And there are other people in here. I mean, I, I have had times when I purpose in my heart to sow a seed into somebody's life. And before I could even get it in their hands, my harvest was right behind me. Anybody else ever experienced that? I'm experiencing that more and more today. Hallelujah. Folks, we are in a time of divine acceleration. Now, as I've said in these previous services, I was born on a farm in Mississippi. My grandfather had 70 acres and a lot of it was in produce. He planted, he reaped, he harvested. Uh, I used to go to the field with him when I was a little boy. When, when I remember uh, when I was just a young boy, just, just barely walking, he would, he would put me in, under his, on his, in his arms and carry me to the field and he had a mule with a plow. Wow. And then he'd set me down and I'd watch him plow. And then later he was able to buy his first tractor, a 1927 Massey Ferguson tractor. And I still own that tractor today. <laughs> I remember it. I, 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 would, I would never get rid of it. 
because it brought back, it brings back fond memories. Yes. And I'm, that, that tractor, it had steel cleats. It could knock trees down. Oh, wow. We'd go to the field and I'd say, Grandpa, knock that tree down. <laughs> it might be this big around. And he'd just run up on that thing, knock it down. And it, 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 it brought joy to me just watching what that thing could do. Yeah. Okay. But here's, that's what I want to tell you. Every year after he prepared the soil, he would say to me, now I don't know if anybody else has ever heard this, but this is what my grandfather would say to me. I'm sure if you come from a farming family background, you probably heard one of your ancestors say these words. He'd say, son, it's time to get the seed in the ground because the soil is hot. Anybody ever heard that before? The soil is hot. What do you mean by that? We've done everything needful. We've tilled it. We've got it prepared. There's no weeds. There's nothing that can choke the seed. Uh, we've got plenty of moisture. And then he would always say this. And he said, son, we're going to have good crops again this year. Amen. I'd say, grandpa, how do you know? You say that every year. Not everybody has good crops. But you say that every year. How do you know we're going to have good crops? He said, number one, I'm planting the seed when the soil is hot. And not only that, this is good old Mississippi Delta soil. You can throw a stick out here and it'll be a tree next year. I said, wow. I believed him, you know. Now that wasn't quite true, but that's what he would tell me every year. The soil is hot and this is good old Mississippi Delta soil. You can grow anything here, son. Folks, I'd like to announce to you, there's never been a better time for sowing seed than right now. When the rest of the world is screaming worst of times, God wants you to have your best of times. Uh, I want to announce to you, the soil is hot. The soil is hot. But I believe the Lord had me to minister this tonight for your benefit so that you can get, uh, the way I look at it is, Jerry, get all the seed you can get in your hands into the soil as quick as you can and get in this time of divine acceleration. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I wrote a book a number of years ago and it's entitled The Prayer of Petition. The Prayer of Petition. And every, every major thing that we have believed for in this ministry, we would write a prayer of petition first and present it to God and, and, and sow seed toward it. Amen. Now, Brother Copeland taught me, I, I've been, I, I flew in that little Skylang when he had that. I flew in that 310 when he had that. I flew in that Cessna uh, 414 when he had that. And then about that time, I uh, had launched out into this ministry. And, and I learned from Brother Copeland when I said earlier that that was one of the greatest lessons on faith that I had ever seen, him sowing that airplane and, and God giving him the money to launch the television ministry. And a short time afterwards, a bigger, better, faster airplane. The Bible says, follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That marked me. That marked me. I remember him calling my house one night and he said, would you and Carolyn and the girls like to see a miracle? I said, yes, sir. We love seeing miracles. He said, meet me out at Oak Grove Airport. When? Right now. So we, we got dressed and we went out to Oak Grove Airport and Brother Copeland standing there and Gloria standing here and Kelly was standing there and John was standing here. They all looking off in the distance. So we just got in line. Well, I don't know what we're looking for. We just all got in line and started looking in the distance. Well, in a little while, some lights on the horizon we began to see. There was an airplane on final approach and it landed, pulled up right there in front of where we were all standing and it was that 414. And the man got out of the airplane and said, here's the keys, and here's the title deed. That marked me, that marked me to the point 
that I learned how to acquire airplanes in our ministry. Could you be limiting God? What if you're preventing God from doing bigger and greater things in your life? Today's special offer, the Don't Limit God package, contains Jerry Savelle's best-selling book, Called to Battle, Destined to Win, and his powerful two-part audio series, Don't Limit God. It's time to expand your thinking and reject small ideas. It's God's idea for you to prosper, and He is able to pour out His extraordinary abundance and provision. He loves to turn around impossible situations. In this package, Jerry teaches how to get into agreement with God, how to see from God's perspective, how to win every fight, and how to receive a miracle. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Don't Limit God special package. Refuse to think small any longer. Order now and learn how to align your life to God's plan and receive all He has for you. Thank you so very much for joining me today. And I want to encourage you to join me as often as you possibly can because we have been instructed by the Lord to help build up your faith, help encourage you, help cause you to become the winner in life that God wants you to be. We're going to continue talking about, over the next few weeks, this subject, Don't Limit God. I want to encourage you to be in faith. Don't ever stop trusting God. Don't ever stop believing God. And don't ever give up on His Word. Don't limit Him because God has big plans for your life and they do not include failure and defeat. So one of the ways that we've learned today on how do we limit God is through our small thinking, through our negative talking, and forgetting about the power of His hand. Forgetting that God is capable of doing what men say is impossible. Don't ever forget that and don't ever give up on Him. Amen? So I want to encourage you, just stay in faith and God is going to see you through. No matter what you're going through, victory is possible and failure and defeat is not inevitable. Amen? So let me remind you of our special offer, two CDs entitled, Don't Limit God. These are very powerful. And even though we've talked about some of this information, this covers so much more. And I know it'll be a blessing and an inspiration to your life. So don't forget that. Two CDs entitled, Don't Limit God. Then my book entitled, Called to Battle, Destined to Win. I wrote this a few years ago and people have enjoyed it all over the world. We are called to battle. This is not uh, something that we just, you know, tiptoe through the tulips, so to speak. We do have a fight. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith, but it's a battle that you can win. Called to battle, destined to win. The Don't Limit God series. So if you'd like to have this in your home, the ordering information is on your screen, or you can go to jerrysavelle.org and all that information will be repeated. Join me again next time. And until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world. 